Good evening, and welcome again to Confirmation Class. And I'm Pastor Bruce Gretz, our Savior's Lutheran Church in rural Utah, and we're on another Confirmation lesson tonight, Baptism, the Newness of Life. It is just such a, a joy to walk in the newness of our uh, baptism, newness of life because of our baptisms, and uh, Romans 6, 3, and 4, it says that. That is our theme verse for this evening. But I will tell you, there's a major difference uh, in our faith and the Lutheran faith where everything comes out of our baptisms and it's not just a symbolic or a ceremonial uh, rededication or dedication of our lives uh, telling everyone that we're following Christ. It's not simply an outward manifestation of an inward conviction. It is everything to us because uh, it, it gives us the forgiveness of sins, the Holy Spirit. Uh, it, it gives us the power to walk in newness of life, being raised with uh, Christ, being buried with Him in death and raised to new life. And uh, it has made such a difference in my walk with the Lord to remember my baptism every day. And I would encourage you as you wash your face or take a shower in the morning or a bath, whatever you do, splash water in your face to remember that your baptism, that you're forgiven of your sins, you have eternal life, you're a new creature in Christ, and that um, uh, it's only because of the cross that we are forgiven and we have any power through His Spirit uh, to walk in that use of life. So I, I feel for my uh, non-liturgical, non-sacramental friends, believers, who don't see our baptisms as a source of strength um, because what it would be is just a source of my will uh, or remembrance of my will determining that I'm going to follow Christ and telling the world that I'm going to follow Christ and that's not. No, we celebrate as Lutherans what God has done for us in Christ and what he's done for us in our baptisms, not what we're going to do for him because of our baptisms. And that is a huge difference and has made my walk with the Lord so much easier in the sense that my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Uh, that sense that and certainly there's, there's struggles, and I don't mean to imply that, um, but that it, it's not just me and my will dedicating my life to Christ and following Him and deciding to make all these correct decisions to follow the 6,000 life principles uh, that are in the scripture that every preacher has a list of and they're all different. and. Um, and in fact, Charles Stanley, whom I, whom I admire and respect, has a Bible, a study Bible, called the Life Principles Bible. And that's what it's all about if you're an evangelical. It's about these principles that we derive from Scripture. And as Lutherans, um, we preach Christ and Him crucified. Our, all of our theology is Christocentric. It's, we live a cruciform life. We're being conformed to the cross, a life of sacrifice, a life of taking up our cross daily and following Him, giving up our egos, giving up uh, our logos, giving up uh, all of that, and we being buried with Christ in our baptisms and raised in new life. That's, we're now to live a crucified life, a life formed by the cross. And so it's just different, uh, and uh, I believe is correct understanding of Scripture, but don't ever think that all of our evangelical friends are heretics. They're not. They just view it differently. And they just, uh, I think, in the desire to get away from the Catholic Church's emphasis on baptism uh, and infant baptism, the, some of the reformers, uh, Zwingli and Calvin and some of the others, uh, right around Luther's time, wanted to get further away from the Catholic Church. Luther wanted to reform the Catholic Church. And these other guys really wanted to make a break with the Catholic so, um, be that as it may, I'm excited to teach this lesson. I love thinking about it. it, it again, it's just made such a difference in my life that I want to share it with you. And so I hope you'll get something out of this. Um, do you not know that our theme verse, Romans 6, 3 and 4, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we've been buried with him. Sorry, I say that like East Coast. Buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, why the purpose? So we too, or in order that, we too, 
might walk in newness of life. So that is the purpose. That is the reason. Uh, I mean, that is where we're coming out of. We're coming out of our baptism. So uh, this is a great theme verse. Uh, share your highs and lows with your parents. Read Romans 3, and 4, uh, 6, 3, and 4 and highlight them in your Bibles. Talk about how that Bible reading might relate to your highs and lows. Pray for one another's highs and lows and bless one another with the sign of the cross. If you just do the take five at home uh, tonight with your family. Remember one thing, by the water and power of God's word, you are a new creation. All right? So it's not just the water that makes you a new creation. It's the water and God's word that makes you a new creation. Our opening prayer. Dear God, we praise you for the opportunity to become new people each day in our baptism. Hear that? Hear that? Uh, Jesus, thank you for the forgiveness and belonging that comes from being baptized in your name into your family. Holy Spirit, help us understand and experience newness this day by drowning the old self and rising to new life in you. Martin Luther said it. We're to drown the old man, the old self, the flesh, every day in the waters of our baptism, remembering that we've been raised to newness of life. We've been forgiven of our sins. We're new creatures, new creations. We don't act like we have to act like we used to act or like unbelievers act. We don't act like that because we're new creatures in Christ. So we have some images. Uh, you can't see them, but uh, the analogy is to drown you. In some traditions, people are held underwater during baptism to symbolize the dying of the old and rising to the new. That's called immersion. Luther said shin, sins, not shins, sins should be drowned daily through repentance. What does repentance mean? That I, I change my mind about what I have done, either knowingly or unknowingly, and, uh, and then uh, head in a new direction, basically. Uh, I don't, you know, like if I got a problem with cussing, I want to confess that every day and then head in a new direction where my speech is seasoned with salt. Now, repentance is the start of that, and asking the Holy Spirit to control one's tongue is the way to go after you've repented. Because as James tells us in James chapter 3, no one can control their tongue. So we can only control our tongue through the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's just an example. And then it takes... Take turns, dunk you one another, chain, drown the old, rise to the new. Well, we're not going to do that today, and uh, we wouldn't do it at church either. So bury the sin fish. Bury the sin fish. Dead things start to smell, if not buried after a while. So we died with Christ. We have to be buried with him. And sing, uh, oh, uh, let me, I was, oh, I, I moved too quickly through that. Um, but anyhow, um, Things that aren't buried do start to smell after three days, so we need to uh, uh, be raised to new life as well. We need to bury that old man, that flesh, and be raised to new life with Christ. So, stronger than dirt, sin is a stain that won't go away. We can't remove the stains alone. Baptism washes away our sins by connecting us to Christ. And daily repentance keeps us clean. Yeah, that's what we say in the Lord's Prayer. Um, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The early Christians, as I understood, they prayed the Lord's Prayer maybe three times a day, or they had prayers three times a day. And I'm sure they prayed the Lord's Prayer uh, more than one time. And so why do we ask um, God to forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us in the Lord's Prayer? Why do you? So we keep that re relationship clear with the Lord, where we're all good, where there's nothing hindering our fellowship with Him. Uh, I like, there was a, a group, uh, a Christian, you know, heavy metal rock group that had a song that said there is a, there is a blood that leaves no stain, and that's the blood of Christ. Uh, if you're ever trying to get blood out of a, of a shirt or something, it's not easy. So um, baptism washes away our sins by connecting us to Christ. We're baptized into his body. And then there's an analogy of the compost pile. Compost pile decomposes, and it, it makes the soil better. Um, garbage is purified. The microbes eat the garbage and take it into the soil, and um, and makes it a, a, a new area, a new garden area. The soil is better. You can grow better things in there. 
And so baptism's like a compost pile in a way. It seems like a little bit of a stretch to me, but okay. Um, in that <clears throat> we were buried with Christ and raised a new life. Um, we, uh, we are purified. Um, that sin is uh, forgiven, uh, but we do sin daily. And if you don't believe that, then there are some of our Christian brothers and sisters that believe in sinless perfectionism, uh, Nazarene friends, uh, some of the Assembly of God people, I'm sure, believe that, our Pentecostal friends, some of them, Wesley and Methodist, are most known for that, that you could live in a state of sinless perfectionism as you're yielded to the Holy Spirit and as you're uh, totally, you know, committed to the Lord. But uh, I don't see that. It's, I don't see that in Scripture. I don't see that, so I have a hard time with that. I think it's coming more out of philosophy and the possibility of that. Uh, and it is, I guess, ideally so if we weren't in these fleshly bodies. Uh, the idea being that we could be yielded to the Holy Spirit 24/7, our wills not being involved in there at all, um, uh, us never doing anything. God's, against God's law because we're so controlled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I don't think that's a reality. Uh, Paul in Romans 7 tells, tells us that he was the most miserable man of all because who could deliver him from the, the body of death? That, that he saw the law in his members. He wanted to do what was right, but his body wanted to do something that was wrong. So, you know, he, uh, and that by that he meant his mind as well, you know, not just his physical what belonged to his physical body, wanted to go against the law of God. And that's just who we are. That's just our human nature. And that human nature is not destroyed. Uh, and that's why we're to daily repent, because we commit sins every day, knowingly or unknowingly. And cleanser of life. Why is it important to clean the cut or wound? Because it'll get infected. We use to clean a wound, uh, some kind of antiseptic. Uh, how does the scab aid in the healing process? Well, the scab keeps the uh, skin from getting reinfected, and it, I, I guess, and uh, protects the new skin so that it is not hurt or harmed. So, baptism is like a salve in a way. Um, uh, salve and, and the word salvation related to baptism. It's a salve in that it, it takes care of, this, of our sin problem eternally, but at, on a daily basis. And, and some theologians make this, this distinction between positional uh, positional righteousness and practical righteousness. Uh, we are positionally in Christ and so we are righteous. Uh, practically, we sin every day. So the salve of baptism, it takes care of the sin problem forever, but we, can, we are it's, it's a, I, I don't know how to say it, but it's, it's more, there's a, an infection in us that baptism keeps at bay from growing. But that infection will be with us until we see Jesus. For when we see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. First John, uh, I forget, tells us that as well. See, First John 2, I believe. So the word salve and salvation related to baptism, they're healing. Um, salvation, uh, the, the word uh, salvation or to save in the Greek means to rescue, deliver, save. So it, it, baptism does save us eternally and it does save us temporally. And that every day we remember our baptisms and we know that our, and, and we confess our sins and we repent, remembering our baptisms and our sins are washed away. So that infection is kept under control. Not by us, but by God, what God has done for us in the waters of our baptism. So, everyday death and life brainstorm a list of animals that shed their skins. I can just think of reptiles, snakes. Uh, where did I see snake skins? Was that out in California? Um, what would happen to these animals if they didn't shed the old? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a, you know, one of those kind of people knows all that. I guess uh, they have to shed it for different seasons. I don't know. How is baptism like shedding skin? Hmm. 
um, well, we're new creatures in Christ, and we are shedding the old self, uh, but yet there's a, a minuscule part of that old self that still resides in us, and that's simply because we're in our flesh. Um, there's just no way around that. Um, and repentance is like shedding a skin, and then we're getting the old off of us. Um, we're turning those old ways, um, living out of our, of our old man or, or the, the flesh that, that continually dominates us. Um, when we repent, it's like shedding that off again. I'm, I'm not living by the power of the flesh or following my flesh. I'm living in the power of the Holy Spirit by remembering my baptism. But uh, I'm sure... Remember our theme verse, Romans 6, 3, and 4. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. Not just to say that we dedicated our lives to follow him. No. No. Baptism gives us the power through the Spirit, which is given to us in our waters and our baptism, uh, to live lives that please the Lord. So, um, it says, what other verses, I'm reading how the verse of the week, Romans 6, 3, and 4, what other verses can you find that have to do with the theme verse? I immediately think of um, uh, Titus 3, 5, and 6, uh, because... And I had never seen this when I was an evangelical, and evangelicals would deny that it refers to water baptism, but uh, I believe it does, and Lutherans do. Um, Titus 3, 5, and 6. Well, let's start with verse 3. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, Hated by others and hating one another, but there's always the best word in scripture, but God, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us. God our Savior, Jesus Christ. He saved us. Now get this. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, not because of even righteous works that we've done, like helping the poor. No, not because of any good we've done. But according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Now just to stop right there, by the washing of regeneration. Evangelicals do not believe that Baptism regenerates our wills to where we can believe in Christ. But we as Lutherans and the early church fathers, I think every one of them believed that when we were baptized, our wills were regenerated. Why do our wills need to be regenerated? Because what Ephesians 2 tells us, but we were dead in our trespasses and sins. But God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive together. God made us alive. John 1 tells us that we're not saved by the will of man, but, but by the will of God. To as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons and daughters of God, to those that believe in his name. But we didn't do that by our will. God willed that we would be saved. So our wills are regenerated in the, in the waters of our baptism. And we can believe we do believe that Jesus died to pay for our sins and that salvation is in him alone. Nothing we do, as he said, not by any works of righteousness that we have done, but God, who is good and loving, appeared, his loving kindness appeared in Christ. He saved us, not because of works, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration. Now get this, and renewal of the Holy Spirit. So I, I think it's a both end here. We're, we're both um, uh, re 
regenerated and also renewed by the Holy Spirit through our baptism. So, not because of words. Let me just read you the Lutheran Study Bible's note on it. Um, okay, not because of works. Let's see. Um, oh, here we go. Um, God's loving grace He extends to us are in keeping with His merciful nature. The washing of regeneration and renewal, baptism brings new life and spiritual cleansing. Baptism brings new life and spiritual cleansing. God provides this baptism as a means for us to receive His grace. That's right. That's why it's a sacrament. It's a means by which we receive grace. Communion is a sacrament because it's the means by which we receive grace. So I think Titus 3, 5, and 6 are, are very, very similar that we have to remember our baptisms and thank God for regenerating our wills to where we can believe in Christ because our wills are dead. A dead man can't choose. That's where all the stuff you hear about making the decision to follow Christ. That's nice, but it's not really probable. That's as Lutherans, we don't demand a decision. We just preach the gospel. The Spirit of God will move in someone's heart. When Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, the, he said, but by the foreknowledge of God and, pre and his predetermined plan, you wicked men crucified this Jesus of Nazareth. And they said, what shall we do? And he said, repent and be baptized. And believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be baptized for the remission, the forgiveness of your sins, for the purpose of forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the Holy Spirit. So, um, uh, we just preach it. God the Spirit. God's Spirit will work in people's hearts and bring them to Himself, those that are ordained for eternal life. So, Titus 3, 5, and 6. Commit those to memory as well. And uh, those I think fit with Romans 6, 3, and 4. So, presence every day. What gift is given through baptism according to each of these verses? Wow. What? Okay. Well, I'll try to do this a little bit quickly. Hopefully, thankfully, my Bible has tabs. No, I'm just kidding. In the Bible are. Uh, Old Testament's a little tough in the Bible Prophets. But, uh, um, okay. In John chapter 3, verse 5, uh, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. So, eternal life is given. Um, you know, we're born again. We're born from anew. That's what John chapter 3, verse 5. Ephesians 1. Uh, well, let's go to John 15. 15, since we're in the Gospel of John. Bounce all over the place. John 15, 5. John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. We're baptized into Christ. The, the power to live the, the Christian life comes through our baptisms, uh, through the power of the risen Christ through the Holy Spirit uh, enabling us. And so I think that's uh, also related to baptism as well. Ephesians 1, 3 through 5. Uh, well, let's go to 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. That's before Ephesians. 2 Corinthians 1. One and twenty-two, and it is God who establishes us with you in Christ, and has anointed us, and who has also put His seal on us, and given us His Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. He gave us the Spirit in the waters of our baptism, Acts two thirty-eight, and um, Titus three five and six, um, and when we heard the gospel. So, uh, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So. This, he put his seal on us uh, with the Holy Spirit in the waters of our baptism. Colossians 1, 13 and 14, or no, Ephesians 1, 3 through 5. Let's go there first. Ephesians 1, 3 through 5. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us uh, for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. So, uh, Ephesians 1, 3 through 5. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world and to be holy and blameless for adopted. When are we adopted into his family? At our baptisms. Did baptism of a uh, little baby girl yesterday and what a glorious event that is. I, I love doing baptisms and uh, oh man, to, to part of the kingdom of God at this point in time. We're so thankful for that as well. One, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. I love this, these two verses. Um, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. Now get this word. He's delivered us from the domain of darkness. But done what with us? Are we like in a lighter area? No. And transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. When were our sins forgiven? In the waters of our baptism. When we believe the gospel, and it's in Christ that we are then transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption. So we were uh, placed into him in the waters of our baptism, our theme verse, Romans 6, 2 and 3, or 3 and 4. So um, anyhow, Acts 22, 16, going backwards here, sorry, I missed that. And now, why do you wait? This is Ananias talking to Paul as Paul is recounting his conversion. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name, Jesus. Right? Jesus. Uh, the Lord saves. Uh, so, Paul. There wasn't, it wasn't speaking in tongues that solidified him as a believer. It wasn't um, walking an aisle, raising a hand, uh, praying a prayer. It was his baptism. Ananias said to him immediately, um, you know, because he, he recounts his uh, situation on Damascus for Acts chapter 9. He says, Brother Saul, um, and one Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me, came to Paul, and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth, for you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen in him. And so his sight's restored, and then the first thing Ananias says to him, yes, God's going to use you, you're going to be a voice, uh, you're, you're going to see the righteous one, which he did for three years in the, in the Arabian desert, as Christ taught him, but he said, you're going you're to be a witness. And the first thing he, so that's what he's going to do. The first thing he tells him to do, rise and be baptized. And wash away your sins, calling on his name. All right? So, calling on the name of the Lord, Jesus. And he did. And he, got his, he was baptized. And uh, his sins were forgiven. Galatians 3, 27 through 28. Great verses here. We're clothed in Christ's righteousness. Tells us here in Galatians 3, 27 and 28. If you want to remember what Galatians is, uh, General Electric, Pepsi-Cola, uh, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Galatians 3, 27, 28. All right. Uh, verse 26. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many as you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Some versions say have been clothed with Christ. So there it is. When you were baptized, you received Christ's righteousness. So if you're going to die and stand before God, he would see the righteousness of Christ, not your righteousness, not my righteousness, which is nothing but filthy rags. 
And 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21 says we're saved uh, by appeal to a good conscience. And that baptism now saves us. And uh, let's see, 20 and 21. Because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. So we're brought safely through the waters of our baptism, and we're not as a removal of dirt from the body. We're not talking about um, that, uh, the dirt removed from the body. We're talking about being forgiven for our sins. And uh, some people, evangelicals, want to say this is just a spiritual cleansing. Well, it, it, I mean, it, it, it's meant spiritually. It's not. It doesn't have any. Um, how can I say this? Uh, it's it's not for the forgiveness of our sins. And uh, he's. We cannot be uh, saved without our sins being forgiven. And here. He says uh, that uh, baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. The only way baptism can save you is to forgive your sins, give you the Holy Spirit, give you Christ's righteousness. It's the only way baptism can save you. So that's what it does. It also gives you a clear conscience. What? Why? Why do we have a clean conscience? And this is why Luther said to remember your baptism every day. Why? Because our sins are forgiven. So we can let it go. We can let that go. So these are great, unbelievable verses. Power to change, read Acts 1633. Man, we're going to town here today, tonight. 1633. All right. Sixteen thirty three. He took them, sang out over the night, and washed their wounds, and he was baptized at once. He and all his family. So, uh, let's see. The Philippian jailer is converted. Paul and Silas were in jail. The jail opens, and then he's ready to harm himself because if, if the prisoners get lost, he'd be executed, or they get out, he'd be executed. And so the Philippian jailer says, "Sirs, what must I do to be saved?" And they said, "Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved." you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds and he was baptized at once. Hmm. So, being saved has to do with believing in the Lord Jesus and being baptized. So, belief and baptism are the same, I believe. Uh, you, you know, faith comes with baptism. We believe, in fact, in infant baptism because God creates faith through the water and the word and because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10 17. Now, parents have to nurture that and that's why the parental vows and the uh, godparents' vows or the sponsor's vows are that we will raise this child teaching them the Ten Commandments, the, the creed, and, and the uh, Lord's Prayer. And that's what comes is all about. So uh, the jailer is afraid you're going to escape. No, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was baptized immediately. Uh, belief and baptism go together. Baptism is not a work at all. And Paul baptized the whole family uh, because uh, they all they they all heard the word. They all wanted to be saved. Um, was told so about so we'll be saved. Uh, what does why does this what does this story have to do with newness is the question. And uh, then he brought them up into his house, set food before them, and he rejoiced along with his entire household that he believed in God. And we are equating there the Lord Jesus Christ with God. So um, it also has to do with baptizing children. Yes. We, we have to assume the whole household had some children in it who, who uh, were not necessarily of this, Afri uh, this uh, age of accountability idea, which for the Catholic Church, when I was growing up, was six. Uh, other people say eight, you know, 
was all kinds of different ages, 13, because that's when Jewish kids were uh, had their bar mitzvah, their bat mitzvah. Um, so they're now accountable. Um, and it's interesting that the only people who could go into the promised land were those who were under 20. So, you know, this age of accountability thing, to me, is just a toss-up. Nobody knows, and it's really not uh, appropriate, I don't think. Uh, it's kind of man putting, you know, our understanding of being just onto God when God just says, um, baptize. Um, baptize infants, baptize everyone. Um, the, uh, there was a council in Northern Africa that um, I, it, was, it was like in the late 300s and uh, a number of the bishops there in Northern Africa uh, had a question, should they wait till the eighth day to uh, baptize the children because uh, that's when baptism being uh, a form of circumcision, a circumcision of the heart, uh, that's when Jewish males were circumcised on the eighth day. And those bishops said there in Northern Africa, no, baptize them as quickly as possible. Martin Luther was baptized the day after he was born by his father. He was baptized Catholic. So we want to baptize children and uh, plant the seed of faith in them and then nurture that, that faith as the parents and as a church. What would I change? Bible time. What would, I, what would you change about your physical self? Well... Okay, we all have different things about that. What would we change about our emotional, mental, spiritual self? What would you change about the world? What does baptism have to do with change? Walk in newness of life. We don't have to live like we once lived. We don't have to give in to the flesh. We don't have to um, see ourselves in a totally negative light. Uh, we can see ourselves as sons and daughters of God. All right, we're moving to the questions now. Whew, seems like that was a long lesson. Hope you, can, hope you stay with me. And let's go. The gifts we receive with our baptism day are liberation from sin and death, a new car and a year supply of gas, new shoes and a sweater, a pair of socks and a t-shirt, and A, liberation from sin, sin and death. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to sip here some tea. All right. I got that one right. We remember our baptism because it helps us remember that we've been claimed by Christ. If we don't know him well, our pastor tells us to. It's better than remembering how dorky we looked in grade school. Let's go A. All right. Got that one right as well. Baptism is like shedding skin because we get baptized by crawling in our bellies like a snake. No. We shed our sinful selves for the new life. We sometimes wear a robe, which we take off later. We lose a good chunk of skin afterwards. How about we shed our sinful selves? A major benefit of baptism is new life in Christ, money, applause, free hair washing, and new life in Christ. And words are spoken over the water in baptism because we don't like silence. Pastors are paid by the number of words they speak. No, that is not correct. God's word is the sign and holy seal of baptism. A good speaking voice is pleasing to God. Let's go see. God's word is the sign and holy seal. Why baptize babies? Because the first disciples of Jesus baptized whole households. Because Jesus said, let the little children come to me. A and B. Good question, ask your pastor. And we'll run with C, which is A and B. Newness of life means in baptism we're cleansed and reborn to live our life in Christ. Once we're baptized, we'll never sin again. We need to always use new water in a baptism. That's C and D, none of the above. A, in baptism, we are cleansed and reborn to live our life in Christ. Original sin is like KFC's original recipe. <clears throat> the first sin you commit after turning 18. There's the age of accountability. See the simple nature we are born with as humans and a new dance club. Ooh, a new dance club called original sin. That's not good. It would be see the sinful nature we are born with as humans. The Resurrection is a new movie starring Elvis. The event of Easter morning where Jesus rose from the dead. 
What the lunch lady does with last week's meatloaf? Ooh. All of the above. No, 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 no. The event of Easter morning where Jesus rose from the dead. Romans 6, 3 and 4. The verse of the week tells us being buried can be fun. What? We should walk about every day. No. Jesus buries us in paperwork during confirmation. No. Just as Christ died and rose again through baptism, we die to the old sinful self and rise to newness of life. So just, I read that a little bit wrong. Just as Christ died and rose again through baptism, we die to the old sinful self and rise to newness of life. That would be deep, deep. All right. All right. Good job. All right, let's move on to weakest think. No, weakest think. Now we have to come up with the word that this describes. Being washed, sprinkled, or immersed in water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We shouldn't have to go any further with that, really. Becoming a child of God through adoption into Christ's family, a special sacramental washing, a way of our sins and rising new life. The event in which sinners are washed with water and saved by God's word as God begins shaping them into followers of Jesus Christ for life. Baptism. There we go. Not too hard. The practice taught where a person must be old enough to reject their sinful ways and choose Christ in order to be baptized. Baptists practice this type of baptism. Someone who doesn't believe probably wouldn't do this. This type of baptism will make a out of you. Actually, it's the other way around. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. This is believers baptism. Believers baptism. Yes. Uh, and that's what evangelicals teach. That you it's about your faith in Christ. It doesn't give you faith. It doesn't strengthen any faith that you might have uh, prior to that through hearing the gospel. Uh, it, 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 you know, it, it's a means of grace. Uh, it strengthens our faith to remember our baptism. Our initial baptism creates faith in us. So it doesn't make a, it doesn't, uh, make a believer out of us um, this type, type of baptism will make a believer out of you. Actually, it's the other way around. Um, baptism, uh, you know, uh, it's not believer's baptism. We, it's not about our faith. It's about water and the word. That's why we baptize infants. It's not about the infant's faith. It's creating faith in us through the water and the word. From Latin, immersus, from in and mergere, to merge. The action of plunging into something that surrounds or covers, the action of plunging or dipping into a fluid practice where uh, people are held under water during baptism to symbolize the drowning of the old and rising to new life. That is the practice of immersion. immersion. Dying to the old sinful self and rising to live as God would have us live. Living with a daily reminder of baptismal grace. Modeling our lives after Jesus. Asking what would Jesus do and living our answer. Huh. Uh, walking in newness of life? New life, yeah, just say new life. Okay. A true sense of one's own sinfulness and turning away from it by the mercy of God. From old French, repentir, from re and pentir, to be sorry. The action of turning from sin and dedicating myself to the amendment of one's life, I would add by the power of the Holy Spirit. The action or process of repenting, especially for misdeeds or moral shortcomings, but also repenting for un, uh, sins committed unwittingly or with, without our knowledge, sins of omission as well as commission. And that is repentance, repentance. From the Greek word metanoia. All right, weakest think. Thank you so much for watching tonight. And uh, remember our theme verse, Do You Not Know? Romans 6, 3 and 4, that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we've been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in new. one thing, by the water and power of God's word, you are a new creation. Your sins are forgiven. You have the Holy Spirit and you can walk in newness of life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Living out one's baptism involves a drowning of the old sinful self and rising to new life each day. 
Remember your baptism every day. Repent every day is what we do. Fullness, the challenge is we drown the old and rise to the new this day. We remember that your old self was buried in baptism and raised in new life. To walk in newness of life. Children of God, may you die to sin and rise to newness of life this day. And the response is amen. Our kids are going to join us to say the Lord's Prayer. And uh, we will do that here in just a few minutes. You can get a hold of how important your baptism is to your spiritual condition right here and now. Uh, you'll be doing very, very well. I think they can see us. I think they can see you all. Let's say, let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me or email me at bgrants at gmail.com. Lord bless you. We love you. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> <Have a day. laughs>